Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with another episode of Comic Book Origins. And this is where we take a look at any first appearance of any uh, superhero, villain, or team. Sandra Kane. And man, this girl just doesn't know who she is. Seriously, she started off, by the way, in 1999. Can you believe it's been 20 years? Created by Kelly Puckett and Damian Scott. And uh, that's where we see Cassandra Kane, but the, that's when she becomes Batgirl a little bit later. And then she becomes a villain called Kasumi. She's Black Bat and Batman Incorporated. And then finally, in Batman and Robin Eternal number 26, she became Orphan, which is, she's known as now. It really did sound like DC Comics had no idea what to do with her. But you know what? We're not worried about that. We're just going to check out the very first appearance of Cassandra Kane, Batman number 567. I know you're going to dig this. And as always, we start off looking at the cover, and it's a really cool cover. Now, I think it's the lighting. It's the color that really brings out the, the image on this. I mean, it's a superhero cover. It's just, you know, this would be a poster if it wasn't for Mark of Cain and No Man's Land and all that kind of stuff. Put Batgirl across the top of it, and it's pretty damn awesome. Just to catch those of you who are don't understand uh, up a little bit, Cassandra Cain first appeared in a storyline called No Man's Land. There was a huge earthquake in Gotham City. At the time, there was also, uh, before that, there was like a, a plague. There were so many things happening. The United States said, you know what? Gotham's a lost cause. It's a no man's land. Nobody's allowed in. Nobody's allowed out. Of course, some people got trapped in, including some of the heroes and villains. And that's where we're starting off from. On the splash page, we see Batman come across some bodies tied to a wall. We then cut to a cemetery. Batman's planning a cross, and Batgirl's watching on in secret. She reaches out as if she wants to say something. But as she sees Batman fall to his knees, mourning the people who had died, she figures differently. She walks away, and she hears, I trusted you, but she turns around, and nobody's there, just an empty cemetery. And we cut to Watchtower where Barbara Gordon is sitting and talking. Somebody on the radio says, relax, she's the best courier you have, she'll make it. And Barbara says, stupid to use her at all, didn't know I was sending her into a war zone. Should have been here by, and she turns around. There's Cassandra Kane, ladies and gentlemen, the very first appearance of her anyway. She was Batgirl in the scene before. How did you, where, an apple t for teacher, huh? Sit down. And this is where we find out that Cassandra can't read or speak. As Barbara's holding up a sign that says stop, and she's like, stop. But then Commissioner Gordon comes in saying, Barbara, I need you. And she dis dismisses Cassandra, and as she's walking out, Cassandra sees Barbara Gordon touching Commissioner Gordon's face, kind of realizing the, the relationship between the two. And I guess, I don't know if this is bad editing or not, because it seems like this takes a little bit, like nothing you would like, quick cut to, but it shows Cassandra Kane kind of walking the neighborhood she notices a guy and follows him as he enters this abandoned building getting suspicious when she sees a window that's shaded of course everything's broken there and we find out the mysterious man is a sniper he takes perch in a window cassandra sees commissioner gordon run out realizes that commissioner's the target and she puts it and she positions herself between the sniper and the uh, and the commissioner saving his life staring straight up where the gunman is. The sniper looks surprised to see her, stops, kind of pulls back. The cops see the sniper and begin to fire at him, which I'm thinking, okay, this is a land where there's not a lot of bullets. You don't just randomly fire and apparently miss a lot. They're like stormtroopers. Well, the cops do in fact shoot him through the shoulder. He looks like, okay, that's no big deal, but he ain't using that arm. Until, of course, he turns around and breaks a cop's neck with it. Dude, you would have lost the use of that arm. It doesn't make sense. Cut to the Batman. He's in Harvey Dent's area, and oh, he's got Harvey tied up, and he is not happy. I'm running out of options, Harvey. Those people you slaughtered, I vowed to avenge them, Harvey, on their graves. How am I going to do that? There's no judge to sentence you, no jury to convict you. So what's left? And man, Two-Face is looking scared. The Batman picks up Harvey's coin, looks at it. You know, I think I get it now. It must be nice not to have to choose. He flips it, just this once. Batman catches it, doesn't look, throws the coin. 
Don't force my hand, Harvey. We'll both lose. We cut back to the police department where we see everybody looking scared. Gordon, with fear on his face, says, Kane? David Kane? Sir, if that's true, we, we need to move you to a safe... Hold on. Commissioner Gordon shows Cassandra Kane, who's standing stoic, a picture of David Kane's sigil. Kane shoots girls. He didn't shoot you. Why? You know him, don't you? Cassandra points to Commissioner Gordon, and then to Barbara Gordon, and then to the sigil, and then to herself. Barbara says, You're his daughter? We see Commissioner Gordon put on his jacket. Renee Montoya says, Sir, if he finds you, he won't have to. He's killed two of our men. We're going to find him. Cassandra runs to stop him from leaving the room. Montoya? Montoya grabs her by the arm. Barbara, I need you to lock her in for the night. What? She's young, headstrong. I don't want her trying to shield me again. But before Commissioner could leave, Cassandra Kane grabs the keys, opens, and then shuts the door behind her as she leaves, locking the rest of the group in the room. Cassandra locks the door, and as soon as she turns, she sees Kane with a gun pointed at her. She refuses to move, so Kane fires. He shoots around her. She stops, looks at him, and then jumps, wiping the gun out of his hand with one hand and uppercutting him with the other. We see she's drawn blood, and she remembers when she was younger, standing over a body of a man dying, blood on her fist. He's grappling his throat, and then he falls, dead. She screams, stop, and once again, this surprises Cain. What did you, did you just, can you speak? He walks over to her, touches her face. Can you understand me? He says, crying. Gordon bursts out of the room. And she sees. Gordon kicks the door of the room. Kane looks over at him. He remembers a little girl, bloodied. Open arms. Kane waits for a hug from his daughter. And Kane falls to his knees. As a little girl, Cassandra punched her father and ran away. But now she's bigger, older. She jumps out a window, grabbing onto him. And she just says, Stop. There you go, guys. That is the very first appearance of Cassandra Cain, Batgirl, Black Bat, Kasumi, and now the Orphan. And you know what I realized? That story was pretty good, but it probably would have been more powerful had she just died. Like, her and Cain falls onto, uh, onto the ground and both of them just lay there dead. That would have been more poetic, in my opinion. But still, as it stands, not a bad first appearance. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, ring that notification bell if you haven't done it already. Making sure your notifications are on all for Google and YouTube. And if you haven't done it yet, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi and drop a dollar in the till and uh, help the channel out. Help us keep making videos for you. I'd like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.